Welcome to Sakuli X tutorial number 2, The Basics. In this video, we'll get a feel for the user interface of the Sakuli X IDE and create our first basic automation script. Every video have all slideshows and code available in the description. Sakuli X comes with its own integrated development environment, or IDE for short, which is incredibly powerful with buttons you can click to write the code for you. It's not everything Sakuli X has to offer, but it's very nice for beginners and novice programmers to start learning and have fun while doing it. Sakuli X has several different types of things it can try and match or look for when it's trying to use its functions. For short, we refer to them as PSMRL, standing for Pattern, String, Match, Region and Location. This is fairly straightforward, but the main one we're going to focus on is the Pattern object. Patterns will be the main way that we tell Sakuli X what to interact with. The Pattern object contains several pieces of information that we'll use in our Sakuli X programs. These are an image, the size of the image, a similarity value, and a target offset. For now, you only have to remember that it stores an image. Alright, let's get on to creating something. Let's create a simple automation script that opens up the calculator app and adds 1 plus 1 together. This should get us comfortable with the bare basics of Sakuli X. Alright, so let's come over to our Sakuli X IDE. So this is what our IDE looks like, and you get this from running the run Sakuli X.cmd inside your Sakuli X folder after it's installed. And we've got a few options here, but the main, one, main ones we need to focus on is over on here, over here on the left, we've got our find, find all, wait, wait vanish, exists, and click, double click, right click, hover, and drag drop. There's also these keyboard actions that you can drop, hit the drop down for, which is type, and the text you want to type. So this will uh, start typing keys on your keyboard. Uh, type, this selects an image and then tries to type text into it, and paste text, so paste things uh, into a different, in a, into a field. Alright, so let's get on to what we want it to do. So, first we need to go through the steps that we would go through to open up our calculator. So, I would go down to the start icon, hit start, then under the search programs and files, I would type calc for calculator, oops, calc for calculator, and then hit enter, and that would run the calculator. And then inside the calculator, if I wanted to do 1 plus 1, I'd type 1 plus 1 equals, and we get the answer. So that's what our Sakuli script is going to do. So that might seem a bit advanced to start with, but let's go give it a go anyway, and you'll find that it's not as hard as it looks. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is we want to click this start button. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to say we want to click, and we're going to click the little camera icon next to click, and that'll ask us to select an image on screen. So we want to click the start icon, so let's drag a box over it, and it'll pop up, click the start icon. Cool, so that's our first instruction, we want to click the, inst the start button. Now an interesting thing is there's a delay here for the pop-up animation when you click. So we want to make sure it waits for this search field. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to use the wait command. And we're going to click the little camera again, but this time when we click it, we've got to make sure we quickly click the start icon. So quick start icon, and then we get this section here. And what we're going to do is we want to look for this search bar. So to do this, we're going to drag a box over the whole thing with this little icon in it, so that it can be recognized. And we're going to wait for this to come up on screen. Once it has appeared, so once it's appeared, we're going to type some text. So we're going to type. And we're going to type calc, close quotes, plus key with a capital K, dot enter with capital enter. So that'll type out calculator and then it will press the key enter. Cool. So once that's uh, typed in, we want to wait for the calculator to appear on screen. So let's open up and get our calculator open. So we've got a calculator image here. We're going to come over to the IDE and we're going to wait. And we're going to wait for this calculator to appear on screen. So let's just wait for this number pad to come up. So there we go, it's going to wait until it sees that number pad on screen. And then once the number pad's there, we want to start clicking buttons. So let's uh, click, click the little camera, 
and we want to click the one button or we'll drag over the one and then we want to click the plus button so we'll drag over the plus and then we want to click the one button again so we'll drag over the one and then we want to click on the equal sign so we'll drag over the equal sign. All right, so this is our instructions to run. So we're gonna click the start button, wait until the search pops up, type in calculator or calc and press, press enter. Then we're gonna wait until the calculator appears, then click one plus one equals. And yeah, that should that should run. I'm actually gonna redo this equals sign because it looks like my my mouse was hovering over the top. So we can just delete things by backspacing and we want to click again and wait for the image to pop up and then I'm going to drag over the top of this equal sign just make sure that it looks correct there we go awesome so let's give it a shot so we're going to save this because we need to save it before we can run it so we uh, can look at our folder I'm going to put it in my Sakuli X folder and might even create a subfolder called scripts All right. so inside the scripts folder we're going to save it so Let's call it. Um, let's call it our calc um, file. So that's going to save it, and it'll rename it up here, and it'll show you where it's stored. And then we can hit run. So I'm going to close the calculator because otherwise it will cause issues. And let's hit run. So when you hit run, it'll take over and it'll start automating. As you can see. And we get two. So our script has ended and it's run all successfully. We can have a look at our calculator and it's given us the answer two. Awesome, it worked. Now it's interesting to see how Sakuli X is storing the information that we give it. Let's have a look at how you might start to figure out how Sakuli X works. Plus, it might highlight an issue with our efficiency. Alright, so if we come back over to our folder where we're storing our files, so we created a scripts folder and we called it calc, so it's inside here. We notice that it's got an image for each one of those screenshots that we took, which is a little inefficient, especially when these two are identical images. All right, so we can also see that there's a calc.html file and a calc.py file. So we can open these up. So I could just open these up in H uh, this HTML file up in my uh, editor. And you can see it's just a bunch of HTML code with the names of our uh, code and our pictures. And this is what Sakuli uses to uh, make these images in the editor here. So this is all HTML here. However, the code that actually gets run, we can close this and go back to our folder, is the pi file. So if we open this back, uh, open this up in Notepad++, we can see some code here. So inside this code, we've just got some click and then an image to click, and all these functions hook into Sakuli. Cool. So, as you can see, we do have some inefficiencies with these uh, duplicates, and I think it could be made much more efficient. Okay, so now that we have an idea about how Sakuli X is storing the images in separate files, let's talk about the last two features of our patterns, similarity and target offset. Currently, we haven't taken advantage of these two features, as we've just used the basic image, image selection. Similarity is a decimal value between 0 and 1, but it's actually a percentage. For example, 0 0.5 is 50% similarity. You can think about it as sensitivity. At 50%, if something looks about 50% the same as what you're looking for, click that. If our similarity is 0 0.1, or 10%, if we find anything that looks about 10% the same as what we're looking for, click it. Then we have target offset. Simply, this is the point to click on the image. This is a dy dx offset from the center of our image. This will be immediately obvious once we have a look at it. Alright, let's modify our Sakuli script to use less than half the images we used before by using offsets. We'll also have a fiddle with similarity. Alright, so let's come back over to our code here. So we don't need to change our first uh, thing. We definitely want to click the start button and we definitely want to search 
calc, but we can start to change this weight section here. So what we can do is let's remove uh, these images. So we're going to get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. We're going to get rid of all of this and we're going to reset up our calculator. So let's open it back up. And then inside our calculator, we notice that the plus, uh, the, the one, the plus and the equals buttons are all in this one section of the area. So what we can do is we can go wait for uh, this section to appear on screen. So this section has all of the things that we need in it. Then what we can do is we can grab the image here, copy it, we can type click, open brackets, paste in our image and close brackets. Then we can click on this image here and we can tell, uh, we can have a look at our matching preview. So this is our similarity. So inside the similarity, you can see that the more I start to make it similar, the more objects appear on screen and it starts to get pretty ridiculous. So we want to keep that at a relatively high sensitivity rate, so around 75%. Then we want to look at target offset. So inside our target offset, we can tell it where we want it to click. So what we can do is we can say, hey, click the one button. So you just click inside of our image and it will set the target offset down the bottom to that place on the image. And we can hit apply and OK. And you can see it has our similarity up in the top corner and a little red marker pointing to where it's going to click on the image. Now we can rinse and repeat this. So we can type click or we can hit the click button. We can just put in a dodgy image and then remove it and then paste in our new image. Click on that and then we want to go to our target offset and next we want to hit plus. So we click on the little plus section of that image, hit apply. Okay. We can type out click again, paste our image, close off the bracket. Then we want to press one again. We could have really copied that other, uh, that other code from up there, but we'll just redo it. And then we can type click one more time, paste in our image, close it off, click on it, and set our target offset to the equals button this time. Hit apply, and okay. All right, so now we're using the same image four times here. So we're actually cutting our total program in half. So if we save this, Go back to our folder here. You notice that we've only got three images now. We've got the start button, the search button, and the calculator area. And if we run it, we'll close the calculator first. Now if we run it, hit run, and it'll go press start, type in calc, open up our calculator. Oh, got an error. Uh, region cannot be found. Struggling to find the image. Let's give it one more shot. We'll write you on it. Start calc opens up. Did find it. Press one plus one equals. So I don't know what that error there was. Maybe it took too long to open up. But we found that it worked and we used it to half the amount of images, making our file much, much smaller. Cool. Okay, that's it for this video. I'm sure you can already feel the power at your fingertips. The next thing we'll be looking at is conditional automation. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer it as best as possible. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.